speaking of <laughs> transfer rumors and coaching decisions, um, I don't want to talk too long about them because I feel like we've said everything there is to be said. Um, and we'll probably maybe have to do another big podcast later this week if they go out to Lazio in the Champions League, Stefan. Although um, I, I, I am actually really optimistic that Bayern Munich will now put all the eggs in the Champions League basket and, and possibly even go deep in that competition if they get past Lazio, right? Um, but, you know, that 2-2 two -two draw against Freiburg, um, there was two big takeaways I had from this game. A, teams now believe that they can beat Bayern. Because, like, at no point when Freiburg went down 2-1, most, most, most teams in past years would have said, okay, well, that's it then. You know, there's no coming back. Freiburg was like, no, not only are we going to go for a draw here, we're going to try to actually get all three points. And they played really, really good football. I mean, this is Christian Streich. This is Christian Streich's side. They, they, they do play good football, period. But like, I think the teams now have a belief that Bayern Munich are there for the taking. And I think that is a huge change. And it also underlines what we've said um, over the last few weeks, how much work Max Eberl and Christoph Freund have in the coming months trying to fix this. And I, I actually think there's a really good, well, which is, you know, brings us back to Alonso maybe wanting to stay because... I think it leaves it wide open next year as well as someone coming in and maybe beat this Bayern Munich side again. Um, obviously, we have a lot of coaching discussions. Um, if it isn't Alonso and if Tuchel doesn't get past Lazio, we might have that discussion next week. It is so crazy to think for me, Stefan, that the man that is now being talked about is the guy that gave the club the biggest heartbreak in the history. Yeah, yeah, I suppose so. Um, and I uh, obviously you're talking about all the good of Solskjaer, um, who, which I think that that uh, re that that kind of layoff for me there was a bit dis uh, misleading because I thought you were going to talk about Sebastian Hones, and I was like, when did he break Bar Munich's heart? Uh, but yeah, <laughs> so just to kind of add context, <laughs> just to add context, the German press are saying that if Tuchel is sacked before the end of the season, Solskjaer might be brought in as the um, the caretaker head coach, uh, which makes absolutely no sense to me. Uh, I personally think Solskjaer has just got a very busy agent who's happy to take phone calls from journalists, to be honest with you, um, because every time a job comes up in England, the exact same story pops up. Um, but yeah, th th this was always going to be a problem with keeping Tuchel on. Um, they, they, they've they kind of pulled all their sporty levers, haven't they? They've got nothing left they can do. They can't exactly say, well, they might sack Tuchel because the results aren't good enough. Well, you'll say, well, you know, I I know I've already been, I've been handed my P45. I'm already cleared out my office. Uh, I'm already, you know, I'm already looking for a fly in London or whatever. I'm leaving Munich uh, in a few months' time for sure. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, the, the, the fascinating thing is that at this point, surely you'd think they would just give it to like one of the youth head coaches or someone in charge of the reserve team or whatever else, you know. Um, I'm trying to remember um, if Miroslav Klose was is still running the under 19s, under 21s. No, he's um, gone. The one that has been talked about is Martin Demichelis. Right. Well, yeah. Well, there we go then. You know, something like that would make far more sense to me. Where there's no expectation that he's going to take the job or and he can go back into his role at the club. Um, rather than someone like Solskjaer because that just doesn't make a huge amount of sense to me to be perfectly honest with you but the reason we're talking about this is because of course Bayern Munich drew uh, dropped more points and as you said Freiburg were outstanding in this game uh, two excellent goals from Freiburg and actually two excellent goals from Bayern it was four outstanding uh, goals so I would definitely recommend anyone who didn't watch this game to go check out the goals Um, and it, do you know what I think it really sums up Bayern quite well actually in the sense that Going forward, they have their moments. You know, Musiala still capable of incredible amount of magic, really kind of weaving through defenders to score that goal. Matthias Tell with an outstanding placed shot. Um, I'm sure a lot of fans, I know a lot of our subscribers have been kind of crying out for him to get more starts and he also did a good job of uh, picking up his goal. But yeah, as you said, this just kind of um, shows that teams are not afraid of Bayern. And I think it's probably quite telling. Even the Gunter goal in particular, um, the first goal for Freiburg, the fact that Manuel Neuer pulls off an amazing save in the lead up to that, and then maybe the third or fourth phase of that attack, the ball goes in the back of the net. If you're Manuel Neuer, if you're a defensive coach, you're pulling your hair at that point because you think, why 
why do I, why is it I make an amazing save like that? And then like 40 seconds later, the ball still isn't out of our, our box. Um, and I think that sums up a lot of the issues that Bayern have had this season. Um, but yeah, they're in a rut. Um, they're kind of playing for second place at this point. I'm sure as we'll say in a moment, we'll talk about in a moment, even that might be in jeopardy. Um, but um, yeah, it, it, it definitely feels like Tuchel is now just kind of doing whatever he wants because that lineup, uh, I think it was actually quite similar to the one we saw in the previous game. Um, you know, Dyer starting and Sarah back, Kimmich at right back. Uh, in, intriguingly, kind of sticking by Thomas Muller, uh, which I found quite surprising. Uh, Upa Meccano dropped. Uh, you know, it's it's it feels to me like um, I think you actually mentioned this in one of the, uh, the the subscriber chats, maybe last weekend's one, where you said it looks like Tuchel's almost just using these Bundesliga games as practice runs for the Champions League itself, um, which is quite interesting because that is a competition that they're actually still in. Um, but yeah, it's 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 a, it's a very bizarre moment to be a Bayern Munich fan right now. That's for sure. Yeah, I mean, Matisse Tell, um, there's a bunch of our Substack subscribers that <laughs> were, were screaming of joy when he was finally in the starting lineup and then vindicating them that with that beautiful goal, right? Um, I thought he, he was excellent. Um, you know, and I think this is the time now to play him because he is the future for this club. Um, the, the Bundesliga is, you know, increasing, becoming irrelevant for them, so you might as well play him. Same with Pavlovic, he's sticking to him too. Um, sort of a counter argument to all those people saying Tuchel can't can't uh, integrate young players because there's two right there. Um, so you know Pavlovich in particular, the fact that he's playing him on such an important position every match day, and yes, he's not perfect. No one is saying that he can't be. He's 19. Um, I think that's a lot of credit to him. Um, I actually thought you know this game was really good. Bayern Munich essentially drop points because as you said defensively there were issues there again right that ball ricocheting around the box and poor Mario Neuer who actually I thought had two excellent games now because I think he was really good against Leipzig as well um, really good reflex saves really making really good stops um, you know what is he supposed to do there <laughs> like what is he supposed to do there he just must, must be so frustrating um, you know and that's it, it kind of all leads us to on the field Tuchel's actually, I think, in some ways, setting up his successor quite nicely by bringing in Tell and Pavlovich now and maybe leaving him two ready-made young players that, you know, whoever comes in next can kind of take over. I guess the big question then uh, is whoever comes next. There was actually a really interesting point that was put into the Substack chat. We have the match day uh, chat, right, um, that every week is just growing and growing. And someone asked about fair knots on a slot um, who's now on Max Eber's list. Interesting name, not someone that we maybe expected. Um, I was asked by a um, by someone at the Whitecaps game that I covered yesterday for Transfermarkt uh, here in Vancouver about Sebastian Hoeneß. Turns out one of the journalists is a big Stuttgart fan and really worried that Bayern are going to poach um, their, for their former youth coach, right, and bring him back to Munich. Um I think those two, because I think internally Bayern are probably quite aware of, of how difficult Alonso is going to be. They're going to try, don't get me wrong, because they're Bayern Munich. You know, they're always going to try to poach someone like Alonso from their position. Um, and you have to recall, they tried something similar with Klopp, right, when he was at Dortmund. So like this is not unheard of. The rumors that you're seeing with Alonso and Bayern, they, this is not new. This happened 10 years ago already. But I think internally they, they know that this is going to be really tricky. Arne Slot is an interesting name. I, I have to do my research on him, to be honest. I know Feyenoord have done some really interesting things in the Netherlands. I know Dutch coaches have a history at Bayern, right? We all remember Louis van Gaal um, and how well he... I, I, modern Bayern Munich would not exist without Louis van Gaal. I think this is a point that we always need to make uh, make very strongly. He had his issues, but, you know, um, Dutch Dutch managers have worked there in the past. But Sebastian Hoeneß is the one that intrigues me because his Stuttgart side could catch Bayern and finish second in the Bundesliga, Stefan. Yeah, they absolutely could. Uh, as things stand, they're, after this weekend's uh, football, they're four points behind. Um, I actually thought they were quite lucky to beat Wolfsburg, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, my heart actually goes out to pro Wolfsburg, who in the last kind of month have probably deserved a point against uh, Stuttgart. 
Um, probably, um, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm obviously uh, deserve the point against Wolves, uh, Stuttgart. Uh, were held to draw against Frankfurt. Probably should have beaten Dortmund where they got a point. Um, and then they played, you know, Union Berlin and on Hoffenheim before that. So they've had a really tough run of it actually recently. Um, yeah, well, exactly. Um, and they are kind of edging closer to uh, that relegation zone. Uh, and actually, I would maybe argue that if you actually look, I, I don't have the stats in front of me, so um, forgive me if I'm wrong, but I reckon if you were to look back over Stuttgart's last five games, uh, I suspect that their XG for might be less than their XG against. Um, and what I mean by that is they're actually, they haven't been creating as many chances as their opponents, but they'd be more clinical. And like a lot of teams at this point of the season, like we've seen Leverkusen really grind out results, Stuttgart are doing the exact same thing as well. Um, so, you know, Stuttgart in a great position, but the, I don't know, the, 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 like, the, 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 the stories linking Sebastian Hone is to the Bayern job, um, are interesting, of course. He's done a fantastic job. He's right up there with Xabi Alonso for, you know, manager of the year. Obviously, I don't think he's going to get it if Alonso wins the title. I don't think he'll begrudge anyone that, um, voting for Alonso in that regard. But I think you have to maybe consider the the optics here for how that would play out for Bayern. Uh, and actually, I would probably include Arnie Slot in that too, who um, did a great job at Fires. He was actually linked with the Tottenham job before they decided to go for Ange Postacoglu. I was really heavily linked. I, I might even go as far as to say Feyenoord kind of stopped him from moving there, but maybe I'm making that up. Uh, I can't remember. Uh, I'm going purely on, um, and this was like last May, so it's been a while since then. But um, yeah, he's you wrote an, an article on him, didn't you? For Transfermarkt on Honest Lot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did a profile on him um, when he was linked with a Tottenham job. Uh, I spoke to our colleague, Kevin Lukes in uh, Holland. Uh, so I definitely suggest Bayern fans go look that up and uh, on transfer market and, and see what you think of it. But I don't know. Um, the interesting thing is that, like, for obviously, if, you know, if, if someone like Christoph Freund or Max Eberl are looking at you know the next five or ten years at Bayern Munich, then someone like Sebastian Hones or Slot would make a perfect sense because he's a project manager. Uh, you know, he's a young name uh, who they could probably pick up quite easily and build a squad around. The only issue is that they did this two or three years ago with Julian Nagelsmann and it all went up in smoke. And I suspected some fans may not accept, with all due respect, a lesser name stepping into the, the fray here. They'd probably want some kind of a big name manager um, that they can put toe to toe with the likes of Pep Guardiola. Uh, you know, uh, well, I guess Jurgen Klopp will be there next season, but Mikel Teta, Arsenal, or Carlo Ancelotti, or Real Madrid, etc., etc. Um, the question is what kind of coaches are available and, 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 and that is that is a tricky one but it'll be interesting I mean I'd, I'd love to hear from some Bayern fans who they would want because Xabi Alonso is the obvious one that everybody wants but as we talked about um, neither of us probably really suspect that you'll leave Leverkusen this summer um, and I, I don't know I think I think if I was I think I would, if I was Bayern I'd be looking at Sebastian Hodes and thinking he's got everything right this season but can he do it more than once? And I know he has. Obviously, this isn't his debut season in the Bundesliga. He's done a fantastic job at Stuttgart and before that. Um, but, you know, he, he, I think he has to kind of prove that over a number of seasons at Stuttgart before maybe he should be like in line for a job like Bayern Munich because if they're not careful and they do kind of go for this kind of left-field choice, they might be stuck with another situation like Julian Nagelsmann, who, remember, tactically spot on, uh, squad selection spot on, training... The problem that ha the problem that Julian Nagelsmann had at Bayern was that he just simply wasn't used to a club of that size. Uh, he wasn't used to having this almost like a transfer committee above him. He wasn't used to having an entire boardroom uh, make their point uh, week in week out and having basically a small village of big name ex players. Um, you know just knows in on his job every week. And I know that sounds like hyperbole, but that's exactly the issue that an Arnie Slaw. Uh, or a or a Sebastian Hones will have to deal with, uh, and it's obviously something that Thomas Tuchel struggled with as well. Yeah, and I mean both Tuchel recently, right? Um, is, and I wrote about this in my Max Eber piece. Uh, mentioned this right in public, and then Julian Nagelsmann did a really big interview with Der Spiegel, where he mentioned that as well. You know the culture of the club and how difficult it is to change things and bringing in new ideas and how hard the board is to convince, and. 
it's actually interesting. I mentioned Louis van Hal earlier, right? He too publicly spoke out about that afterwards. How tricky it can be to come in as someone who is maybe has some more radical ideas. And I, I'm not talking Jürgen Klins from putting Buddhas in the, the training center, right? Uh, and we're talking radical ideas tactically um, uh, within reason. Um, and I don't think what Nur Nagelsmann, Tuchel, and Louis van Hal, uh, uh, you know, suggested was always radical. Um, there were some ideas that were rightfully vetoed, you know, um, but there were some ideas that Klins, Klins von famously wanted to loan out Ho uh, Thomas Müller to Hoffenheim, right? Um, which retrospect crazy but you know there's some things where maybe managers come in and they feel like they cannot quite reform the club um and of course maybe that can i just make one point to that man on the back of that before we jump on i was just going to say that when nagelsman got sacked from bar and i wrote a piece for the telegraph uh, here in england and i spoke I, I spoke to someone off the record who used to work with nagelsman and he told me that before Nagelsmann was sacked, uh, he caught up with them after a game where this person that works at another Bundesliga club. And he said it was quite telling that when he said, hey, how's the Bayern Munich going, job going? Nagelsmann just turned around to him and said, it's exhausting. It's absolutely exhausting. And it's not to do with the players. The players are great. Training ground's great. And, you know, you get a lot of PR and propaganda saying he fell out with this player, he fell out with that player. In reality... He just struggled to fit into a, a much bigger structure. And I think, as you said, you know, a whole days or, or an already slob might do the same. Yeah, it's it's extremely complicated. It's interesting because ex independent sources told me the same thing that um, I don't think it was the same source, Steph, and we talked to different people, but, you know, they told me exactly the same thing. <laughs> it's a, it, it wasn't, it was a, a well-known secret. It was the worst kept yeah. secret in German football, really. Yeah. And I mean, you got Nagelsmann, all these people, I mean, the circle of people in football is usually quite small you know you're only always separated by there's only always one degree of separation really between anyone um it is a really small world so you know you get a really good pick if you really want to you can get a really good picture really quickly um and i think you know the, the fact too that so many people have spoken publicly about it i also want to flip this around and talk about stuttgart because stuttgart are now probably going to make the Champions League. I, I, I think they will, right? They're going to have a, a top four, and as we point out many times, top five is probably going to be enough. Finish. They now brought in the new investor in Porsche, right? And what an investment that's for them, right? They're buying this stake in this football club and um, that are clearly Stuttgart are on the up. And I mean up, 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 and up because the stadium, stadium renovation looks really good as well. Um, they're going to play Champions League football next year, which means there's going to be a huge influx of money. Um, there's a lot of things going right there, right? And so if you're Sebastian Hoeneß and you look at this and like, I'm going to have a lot more money to spend next year. Porsche are coming in. There's going to be a brand new stadium because of the Euros, right? Um, I'm going to be in the Champions League. I can prove myself there. And then... If Bayern might still be there in two, three years, the way things are going, or I could go to a other club, I could maybe become the successor for Javi Alonso at Leverkusen, or maybe Leipzig need a new boss, or who knows what's going on with Dortmund, right? Like, the, the, I, I, I don't think there is an urgency from him either. Yeah, I think yeah, I think that's important to know that. As we talked about with Xabi Alonso, where we often say he knows that Real Madrid will always be there for him. Jones is much the same with Bayern. You know, he is. I know the name itself has some recognition, even though it's maybe a little, it's maybe not as obvious as people think, because they maybe think he's only Jones' son or something like that. It's not quite the same. Um, but in a sense, Bayern will always be there for him if he continues to do a good job as a head coach. You know, he could, as you said, he could spend another couple of seasons at Stuttgart. He could even go off and, you know, coach in the Premier League and do a decent job there. And as we've seen with Jurgen Klopp, the entire time he's been at Liverpool, that Germany job or that Bayern job have always been kind of waiting in the wing if he ever wanted it. And we never know, maybe Klopp could be the Bayern Munich head coach next season. Oh, but, God. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> no, the only thing I want to add, uh, the, only, the last thing I want to add about Stuttgart here is just that I think it's maybe also worth just kind of tapering their expectations only because, as I said, their XG numbers of the last five games, I suspect, maybe suggest that they're not running out of steam or, you know, uh, running on empty or anything like that, but they are beginning to really grind out results against 
you know, teams who uh, I think it is the first half of the season, we really expect them to really blow away. And then if you look at who they've got coming up, they've got Union Berlin. They've then got Hoffenheim, who again won this weekend. Uh, Heidenheim, who, you know, can t- who love taking big scalps. Then it's Dortmund, Frankfurt, Bremen, Leverkusen, and then Bar Munich with two games to go. And you look at that list of teams and absolutely are Stuttgart better than Union Berlin, of course. Any better than Hoffenheim? Yes. Heidenheim, Dortmund, Frankfurt, Bremen. All these teams, absolutely. So there's no reason to say they can't continue doing well. But if they are going to start dropping points and if they're going to continue kind of scraping by, scraping by is a really word, bad word to use there because it denotes, suggests they don't deserve it. But unless they can maybe get another kind of boost of energy uh, or performances, I suspect they might start dropping points there. But the only other thing to add is that we've seen Dortmund and Leipzig drop points all season long. So it's not really as if either of them are going to put a huge amount of pressure on them. And the team ahead of them might still drop a few points here and there as well, Bayern Munich, right? And I, I actually suspect that when Stuttgart play Bayern and Leverkusen, that might actually be a really opportune time to play one of them because they, they won't care anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, hey, look, Bayern, Bayern plays Stuttgart on the 5th of April, and by then we might know if Sebastian Hones will be the Stuttgart head coach next season or the Bayern head coach next season. 